So last time we were out on the trail on this thing, I noticed two things. One, everybody had a rooftop tent. Two, everybody had on the back of their rigs their Instagram handle. And three, everybody had these really expensive coolers. So we're gonna show you how to do all those three things right now. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and give this video a great big thumbs up and check out this little project we're gonna do. So I went online to go buy a rooftop tent. Turns out they're really expensive, like over $1,000. So plan B, rooftop tent. Instagram accounts are free, so this shouldn't be too hard. So here's my current cooler. It's a regular Coleman cooler. It's been great. I've had it for over 15 years. It's still holding up well, but I wanted to see what the difference was between this cooler and the really expensive coolers. So if you go on some of the other channels, there's actually one where they cut this thing in half and they cut one of the expensive ones in half. And I've got that link in the description below if you want to check it out. But what it comes down to really is a couple things. One, the wall thicknesses are a little thicker on the big ones. Two, these have foam insulation inside the walls, but the lids are actually hollow. There's no foam up here inside the lid. And then the third thing is they say these ones are bear proof or actually the expensive ones are bear proof. This one, obviously not so bear proof. So we're going to tackle the things that we can on this cooler to make this cooler as close as we can to some of these coolers that you can spend four or 500 bucks on. Now the easiest thing on this cooler to change is the lid as far as the insulation goes. So we are going to get in here and take off this lid so we can work on it. And now we have the lid loose so we can work in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out a way to put some insulation inside this lid. Now the stuff we're gonna be using to insulate the lid is this. This is great stuff expanding foam. It's pretty cool stuff. You can spray it inside through the little hose that it comes with and it'll expand out and fill all the little crevices. So go ahead and pick yourself up some of this. You can get it for four or five bucks at your local hardware store. I've also got a link for it in the uh, description below. So the next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna get your little straw applicator and pick out a drill bit that's a little bit bigger than that straw applicator. And we're gonna go into all of our tall areas here and just drill little holes, just big enough that we can get that straw through and spray foam around. So we're gonna drill some holes. So with all those holes drilled, the next thing we have to do is spray this stuff in there. Now, this stuff is pretty awesome. It expands a lot, but the one thing I will caution you about is if you get this stuff on your skin, you're in for a bad time. It's not gonna hurt or anything, but it is darn near impossible to get off. So try your hardest not to get on your skin. If you want to wear gloves, I'm not gonna wear gloves. I'm just gonna try my best not to. But if you start getting foam out of the holes, don't pick at it until it's dry. Once it's dry, it's really easy to break off, but when it's wet, it just makes a terrible mess. So we're gonna give it a good shake and start getting it inside all these holes. And now you'll see it will start to expand and come out all those holes and that is normal. This stuff is expanding away while it's in there. You wanna let it completely dry before you do anything else with it. So just let it sit, let it expand. It'll fill up all those crevices, insulate your cooler out real nice, and then we will chip off the foam that's come out of the holes. So I've let the foam cure up for about 24 hours now. It is good and hard. You wanna make sure this is good and hard and all the way through. You don't want it soft in the middle because when you start prying these things off, you don't want goop to get all over your hands. Now it's pretty easy from this point to just start picking off the foam that came out through the holes. You can see it really does come up pretty quick. 
anyway, so we're gonna get all the big chunks off and then we're gonna get them under the chisel and kind of scrape up the little stuff and clean it up. So we took some time to really scrape everything off. There's still little bits here and there and I'm gonna finish getting that off, but here's a little tip. If you can't get it off with uh, the chisel, get a scraper, a brush like this, a barbecue brush. It really helps break up the little bits of foam. So now with our lid insulated, we need to worry about these holes and you don't want moisture to get in those holes and grow mold inside your lid. So you wanna seal them up with something. You can give a blob of hot glue in there. Whatever you do, do something food safe. You can get food safe silicone or um, something along those lines fill up those holes so you don't get moisture inside your lid. So after you do that, we just gotta put the lid back on the cooler and we have two more things we gotta take care of after that. All right, so we've got our cooler here and it is insulated from the top now. So that's taken care of, we've got better insulation. One of the other things those real expensive coolers claim is they claim that they are bear proof. Now, it's gonna be kind of tough to make this thing bear proof. Or is it? I have an idea. If it works for other areas, I figured it would work here too. So we made ourselves a little No Bears logo right here on the 3D printer and we were gonna stick that right here on the cooler so all the bears know this is a no bear cooler. That ought to keep them away. So now that we've got our extra insulated bear proof cooler, we wanna make sure that people don't get this thing confused with its much more expensive brethren out there. So we made this little logo to avoid any confusion. Not a Yeti. And we're gonna stick that thing right here on the front so we don't confuse anybody with our new sweet high tech cooler. Now, if you want to get these logos and you don't have a 3D printer, I do have a link in the description below where you can download the files, and I'm going to try to find a place that can actually print these for you, too. So check out the description below. So if this video helped you out at all, please give it a great big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what other kind of projects that you want to see, and make sure you go outside and have some fun this weekend. Go outside and use your cooler. Have an adventure. Thanks a lot for watching.